I'd like to welcome you at this week's Sparking Conversation. I really hope that it will give you a spark for this week. We um, Life is overwhelming and we all need a little bit of extra help. Today's subject is communication and emotions. Now, I'm not going to go into a definition for communication because we all, all know communication. Let's say today we are talking about the glue that puts our relationships and people together. It brings people together if we can um, communicate properly. Now, emotions plays a very large part of our ability to communicate effectively. I think most of us don't even remember or realize how much emotions play a role in our communication. They say between 90 and 95% of our decisions actually comes out of our emotions. Also, when, our, when, uh, when we communicate, that is true. So we can already see what an integral connection there is between emotions and communication. Unfortunately, emotions can also become a barrier that stops us from communicating um, properly. The meaning of emotional, so we talk, we talk about emotional barriers that is um, part of our communication that we must make sure we can get out of the, out of our way. So emotional barriers is a mental limitation that prevents us from communicating properly. Um, it stops us from communicating our thoughts and feelings, but also the information that we want to share. And it stops us from being our authentic self. You can probably think of a moment where, you're, where you communicated, where your emotions got the better part of you and you struggled to communicate it. Maybe you were overwhelmed by your um, emotions and you couldn't convey exactly what you meant. There are various types of emotional barriers. I chose three for today. Anger, pride and anxiety. Now, I almost don't have to say anything. Um, just by saying the words, we can already think how that can stop us from communicating properly. Now, anger is a forceful enemy of effective communication. Anger is a very strong emotion. And anger affects a quite, in a quite significant way the way that the brain processes information. When we're angry, we're less logical. That makes us less open to other people's opinions and also, it makes us less capable of solving problems. For example, angry people have difficult process processing logical statements. So that limits your ability to hear the logic in what another person says. When anger affects your thinking, you are likely to express yourself in unhealthy ways or in ways that betrays you in the wrong way. You may lash out, you might say hurtful things that you didn't mean. So we can, it's just so clear that if we walk with an uh, emotion of anger, that it will stop our communication or our effective communication. The next emotional barrier is pride. Now, pride is an emotional barrier that affects our ability um, to see to, uh, the way that we perceive others. It prevents us from focusing, focusing on anyone's views and opinions other than our own. For example, you, you are likely to dominate a conversation if pride is your strong uh, emotional barrier. Stubbornness is part of emotional barrier of pride. Having, the, having to have the last word Allowing your ego to get into the way of the communication, not being able to admit that you're wrong. They all stem from the emotional barrier, barrier of pride. That stops us from hearing what the other person really wants to say. Collaboration is seen as a very strong um, thing that we need to survive the business world. If you have pride, you're going to struggle with collaboration because you need to be right. You need to be the one with the answer. 
and that stops teamwork and collaboration. The last one is anxiety and fear. Now, we all know that this is part of our community at the moment. People are struggling. We are struggling with anxiety. Now, anxiety stops effective communication because you come from an anxious disposition. It impairs your ability to judge and your ability to act. It has a negative impact on that part of your brain that manages creativity and communication skills. For example, your constant worries can hinder your ability to concentrate on the uh, information that you are giving or receiving. So if we say that emotional barriers can stop our communication, what can we do about it? What is the steps? What? How do I deal with my emotional barriers? The first thing is become aware of what your emotional barrier is. Get in touch with your emotions. Know what you are feeling. Know what the triggers are for your specific emotions. The second thing that you can do is you, if you find that your emotions are too strong, is remove yourself. When your emotions are running too high and you experience that it's stopping you from communicating properly. Accept your imperfections. Give yourself the permission to not always know the answer and to be vulnerable. Do relaxation exercises. Give yourself space to breathe in your life so that you can communicate. Communication is difficult. Let us take control of our emotions by being aware and manage it in a way that it is constructive for our communication.